uh, the very beginning, chapter one. And we're going to start pretty simple, where when we look at the, uh, want to describe the motion of an object, we're going to assume point particle. Uh, we use this generic variable s to represent position, t is going to represent time, and what we start off with is uh, assuming that we can describe position as a function of time. Uh, so starting from this and then a couple of definitions will sort of build up uh, the different kinematic equations that we've already seen from physics. So first, when we take the time derivative uh, of the position with respect to time, so v is equal to ds dt, uh, this gives us the velocity. We'll also introduce this notation of putting a dot over the top of it. So this over dot notation gives us velocity as a function of time, and we can do the same thing defining the acceleration a is dv dt or d squared s dt squared. And again, in the dot notation, we can write this as v dot or as s double dot. Now, um, to get these in a more useful form, uh, we'll often break these into, uh, into differential forms where we take from our definition of velocity that ds is equal to v times dt. From our definition of the acceleration, we take that dv is equal to a times dt. Now, of course, once we do this, we're free to use algebra to rearrange whatever we want. So I can take this top expression and write that dt is equal to ds divided by v. I can take this expression and write that dt is equal to dv divided by a. Uh, but since dt is equal to itself, then I can say that these two bottom expressions are equal to themselves. And so I can eliminate time entirely and write a third differential expression, a times ds is equal to v times dv. So um, again, turning this back into a regular derivative, uh, one of the things we can do rearranging those terms is to say that our acceleration a is equal to our velocity multiplied by dv ds. So here we have to be very careful about how we're taking derivatives. Up ahead, I had dv dt. Here, I had dv ds. Uh, further, when we look at these expressions up here, it was understood that since we had position as a function of time, we were talking about velocity as a function of time and acceleration as a function of time. But here, notice that we've implicitly implied that we are talking about velocity as a function of position. If I take dv ds, then I'm assuming that v is a function of s. And similarly, since I then will have this, uh, I'm defining my acceleration, um, this also implies that I can talk about my acceleration as a function of position. So um, now these expressions then, if we start integrating them, then give rise to the kinematic expressions that we're used to. Uh, so for example, if we look at velocity being a constant, then integrating both sides of the definition of uh, integral from ds, uh, integral of ds equals the integral of v dt, Again, we'll write this with bounds because we always do definite integrals here. And this gives rise to the expression S2 minus S1 is equal to V times T2 minus T1. Uh, and we will also often, let me slide this up a bit. Uh, we will also often um, take one of these points and treat it as a variable and treat uh, the other uh, points here as an initial condition. Uh, so we can write that s, in this case it's going to be an s of t, is equal to s1 plus v of t minus t1, where t1 is my initial time and s1 is my initial position. So uh, this is just the position equation uh, back from physics. Uh, similarly, if we look at the other expressions for the acceleration being constant, again, I would integrate dv is equal to a times dt, and we would integrate a ds is equal to the integral of v dv. And notice that uh, for the expressions over here, we have to make an assumption about the acceleration before we can do these integrals. Uh, but for the ones involving velocity, we don't. The integral of dv is just v. The integral of v dv is going to be 1 half of v squared. And so uh, again, not going through 
the derivation, this would give me that my velocity as a function of time would be equal to some initial velocity plus a t minus t1, again, analogous to what we saw before. Uh, and then the expression over here, uh, again, ultimately gives rise to what we called the velocity displacement equation plus 2a s minus s1. Uh, and then also notice that since I have time not in this expression, um, I can then write this as v as a function of s is equal to plus or minus the square root of v1 squared plus 2a s minus s1. Okay, so um, ultimately what we want to then see is how many different ways uh, how many different ways can we use these differential expressions? How much can we stretch them? Um, and we've started with um, uh, we started with uh, the functions looking at position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time. Uh, and for these, it's fairly straightforward um, because these is this is how we approach things in the first place back in physics. Uh, meaning, all I have to do is just use my definitions, taking derivatives to get to uh, from position to velocity, velocity to acceleration, or to go the other way, um, I just integrate, uh, integrate acceleration to get velocity, integrate velocity to get, uh, to get position. So uh, in other words, here, we're just going to use something like V is equal to S dot. Um, if I want to find out the velocity from the position, A is equal to S double dot. On the other hand, if I have the acceleration and I want to get to the velocity and get to the position, then I know that my Velocity is going to be the integral of a dot dt, and so on. So um, what other expressions uh, that we have now seen, uh, notice that um, we noted earlier that we have a function where, um, a situation where we could use the acceleration as a function of position and the velocity as a function of position. Uh, and then notice that in my... Um, we'll now explicitly write this as a of s ds. This is equal to the integral of v times dv. Uh, performing this integral, we're going to have s left on the left-hand side, v left on the right-hand side. So this is going to give us uh, v as a function of s. If I have v of s, then um, notice that I can write down my expression dt is equal to ds over v. So we've just rearranged one of those definitions and then integrate both sides. And then that will allow us to get, after some algebra, s as a function of t. Uh, we could continue then on. How many different ways can we write, uh, can we describe these kinematic expressions? So another one we can do is we can write our acceleration as a function of velocity. Uh, there are certain situations where that's going to be true. Uh, and again, we're going to go back and use the definition of one of these expressions, dt is equal to dv over a. Uh, and notice it's important that right, if I have ds on this side, I have to have v as a function of s, not v as a function of t. If I had v as a function of t, then I'd be up here looking at this. But uh, now that I have this, notice that once I integrate both sides, I'll have time on one side, I'll have uh, velocity on the other side, and that will give me v of t. And once we have s of t and v of t, uh, we can always take derivatives and take integrals to relate those two. Now, uh, finally, we might, uh, you might imagine having, uh, you know, how many more different ways can I write these functions? Uh, can I write velocity as a function of acceleration? Or can I write position as a function of acceleration? Uh, or can I write position as a function of velocity? Uh, and generically, the answer is no. Um, because uh, in the expressions we had above, uh, we never were taking a derivative of the acceleration. So we, we took the derivative of velocity, we took the derivative of positions, uh, and if I have v as a function of a, that would have to be paired with a dA to do an integral or to take a derivative. So uh, that gets rid of those two. Uh, and this last one, uh, position as a function of velocity, notice that um, when we look at, well, when we look way up here, notice that we had v of s is equal to this plus or minus. So v of s described up here two possible motions, meaning that there's one solution where 
V is positive and one solution where V is negative. Uh, so an S of V generically uh, would be the same for two different motions. Uh, meaning that, yes, it's something we can write down, um, but it is not going to be a unique way of describing the motion. So, uh, again, all of this just starts from the definitions of the uh, definitions of the velocity and the acceleration, and then notice all we're doing here uh, is just sort of juggling these definitions around, um, moving terms around to set up various integrals. So, that's it for this video. Um, Bye.